Hey, what's going on guys? So today is a very rough day and lately the market has been a little bit more choppy. So in this video, we're gonna focus on consistency, but specifically I'm gonna teach you guys about selling puts on QQQ, even if you have a smaller account. Thing is with QQQ, I think it's one of the best opportunities to actually grow your portfolio. And QQQ has a lot of stocks within it that are very valuable, yet individually they're very difficult to trade because they're expensive, right? So if you were to try to sell a put on Apple, you need $14,000. If you wanna sell a put on Microsoft, you need to have like $20,000. Amazon will be about $10,000, right? A lot of these plays right here are very expensive if you were to trade them individually, but by trading QQQ, you actually have access to all of these stocks all 10 of these, there's a lot more, but the top 10 right here are about 48% of the total ETF right here. Now, SPY and QQQ are my top two things to trade right now. They're actually my favorite because as the market is volatile and a lot of people are losing money right on the downswings, a lot of people are exposed to very risky stocks, I'm actually doing really well. So if I go to my portfolio, I just wanna show you, I haven't looked at the one week. Obviously I am down. No, one week, not one month. Uh, on the one week, I'm down 1.91%. So obviously I'm down, right? Because I'm only human. If the market is down, even if I'm hedged, it's still very difficult to be up. But my goal is to be down less than the market, down less than other investors. So all my performance that I'm aiming for is going to be relative because at the end of the day, we can't really control absolute performance, but we can control relative performance. So if everyone's making 50,000 and you're making $75,000, amazing, right? Um, it really depends on your relative performance. So right now my relative performance is 1.95 negative, okay? Let's take a look at, well, I have a lot of SPY, I have a lot of QQQ, Apple, other tech stocks, but let's take a look at the one week. Okay, the one week on SPY is negative 2.91%. So in the past one week, the market is down about 2.9% and I am down 1.9%. So the spread there, the difference in performance is roughly 1%. So in this one week, yes, I am down. Everybody is down. I'm actually curious, how much are you down? Can you post it into the comment section? But check it out. I am down 1% less than the market. And that's because I'm doing a lot of safe strategies. I'm focused on consistency. And yeah, I'm not going to win every single week. But when I have a loss, I'm trying to lose less than the market. And when the market is up, I'm trying to make more than the market. So on a long-term basis, I'm saving lots of money in bad times and making lots of money in good times. So again, this 1% actually for me translates into about $20,000. So I saved $20,000. And just so you know, most people don't even beat the S&P 500. They can't even match it. So that's why it's very important to be very well protected and hedged in good and in bad times. So this video is about QQQ. I love QQQ. If you look at my position, um, in fact, I have a lot of QQQ and SPY that are doing really well. So like 2,500, 21,000, um, I have call credit spreads still on Tesla, but here's my actual equity holdings. This is actually what I'm holding in my portfolio. SPY is obviously a big position, but the second big position is QQQ. And I have a really tough time deciding between the two because, well, I love tech stocks. I think a lot of these tech stocks have sold off a lot and some of them are going for very good valuations like Google. Um, SPY has a lot more diversity, okay? So the difference between SPY and QQQ is SPY is more diverse, it has 500 stocks. It's still going to have those big tech stocks like Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Google, and some others, but SPY has more variation because you know it has consumer defensive, industrials, energy, utility, um, basic materials, real estate, healthcare, financial services. It has other components within it, and that's why as you see the top 10 holdings, are actually not 48%, they're 24%. So SPY has a lot more diversity. For me, I like both and it's really difficult to pick between the two. I do like SPY a little bit more because of the diversification, but for me, QQQ is a better vehicle to trade in because QQQ actually has a little bit more implied volatility. And implied volatility is a good thing if you're trying to collect premium. So let's get to the point, how do we actually sell puts on QQQ and make money if we don't have a large portfolio. So obviously, if I were to do a put, this would be $27,000, okay? But what can you actually do? Okay, so instead what you're going to do is you're going to trade options. And again, QQQ options are amazing because they have good implied volatility. There's actually like a loophole 
to selling puts without needing a large portfolio. The loophole is this, okay? So you're going to go to sell put option. And one of the cool things about QQQ is it has a lot of expirations. So uh, here's an expiration on Monday, then Tuesday, then Wednesday, then Thursday, Friday, Monday, Tuesday. Uh, yeah, every single day practically looks like an expiration in the short term. But then obviously in the long term, it's just the weekly expiration like the rest. But what I think is going to happen is as we approach these dates, there's going to be more expiration dates that we can trade. Okay, so I'm going to go out about a month. Okay, so I'm going to go out a month just to not have such a short term option because when you have a short term option, you have some fees if you're not using Robinhood. If you are using Robinhood, there's a lot of short term volatility. Pretty much just wait, have it erode in value and decay and all that decay as that option erodes is actually yours to keep because when you sell premium of $100 and then the option spread, which I'm going to show you, goes down to like zero. Well, your gain is 100 because you sold for 100. Now it's worth zero. So essentially, it either leaves your account or you can close it for like $1 or so. So you end up making $99 or $100 if you wait all the way until expiration. So I'm going to go to sell put. I'm going to go to the current stock price. Okay, so I'm going to look for a good delta. The way I pick that is I just want to expand here, take a look at the delta. 0.27 is not that good because it's still pretty risky. That means about 27 out of 100 times this option is going to expire in the money. That's not really that good. If you're selling a put, that's not good. You want to be safer. So let me go down all the way to 250. Now the delta is 0.14. This is a much more suitable delta if you want consistent income. Implied volatility is not that high. It's actually only 30, but the volume is pretty good. Okay, it's 1,447. And the bid and ask spread is phenomenal. I mean, this is as tight as it gets. It's only a $1 difference. So that's phenomenal. So here's the thing. If I sell this, I can collect $200, but I have a max loss of $24,797. That's a very large amount of money. And I think about 99% of people probably don't have that, especially if they're trying to learn and get consistent with options. So instead, what you can do in the loophole around this is this example right here. So I'm going to go buy a put option now, okay? So rather than just selling a put option, the loophole around this is you wanna buy another put option much lower than the current strike of 250, okay? So this 250 is pretty safe because it's about $24 out of the money, so that's good. You know, the stock would have to fall, well, QQQ is an index, so the index would have to fall down by about 10%. That's very unlikely in a single month. If you think about it, even in bear markets, the S&P 500 and QQQ will fall like 5%. So this would have to be a 10% crash in 30 days. And again, if you're watching this in the future, just copy this logic and this thought process to a future trade. It's pretty much the same thing. You're always just going to go out about two to four weeks. That's just kind of my preference. I do trade weekly options as well. But for this specific strategy, I think two to four weeks makes more sense. So what I'm going to do is I have the 250 open here and now I'm going to buy another put option. But instead of going like right here at 245, which would be really, really close in short term, but instead of buying the 245 put option right here, which would make this a $500 spread, you can actually go much lower and create a much larger spread or really in essence, just allow you to sell a put option with a really wide strike price. Okay. So Let's go to 230. All right, so let's go to 230, okay? So when I go to 230, now you will see that the return is actually pretty decent, okay? It's almost a 10% return on paper for what you're putting up, okay? So you are selling the 250, then you're buying the 230, and you are collecting $143. Now, instead of needing $24,000, you only need $1,800 to open up this position. Now, clearly the max loss is a lot bigger than the max profit, but if you think about it, it's very hard for QQQ to go down to 250, yet alone all the way down to 230 in just one single month. So I use this loophole a lot with students that are trying to grow a smaller portfolio. And this is much better than just selling a put because you know obviously some students only have $5,000 or $6,000, right? This way you can actually participate in QQQ without having to need you know, 25 grand. And honestly, one of the number one mistakes to trading is when people over leverage their account. For example, they have $5,000 and they end up selling, 
you know, $5,000 of Tesla spreads. Well, check out Tesla, it's coming down right now. So if you had a lot of Tesla, you're in pain and that's not good if you have too much money in any single stock. That's not good proper diversification. That's also not good proper risk management. So what you wanna do instead is for example right here, I'm basically selling a put on QQQ, which is a very safe long-term strategy because selling options just works, whereas buying options is a lot more like being in a casino, it's a lot more risky. So here with QQQ, I have a put credit spread, $145 in gains, max loss is 1,800, but you know, truly this max loss is not gonna really happen. And I can actually just show you how to play around with this max loss. So you can actually, for example, if I were to go up to 240 instead of 230, the max loss is going to decrease and your maximum profit is going to increase as a percentage of your max loss. So here, this is over 10% return, okay? You could put up even less capital here. And to be honest with you, this does not even look bad to me either. The 240 is just fine as well. But you can also go way lower. So for example, let's go to 200. This would be super low, okay? Now your maximum profit is actually going to be larger, okay, that's good. You still have a similar risk profile, but now your max loss is really, really big. So 4,800, but again, remember, this is not going to really happen unless, I mean, QQQ would have to crash from 274 to 200. That's probably not even possible, okay, for it to go down that far. That would have to be like a 27% crash. The chances of that are actually less than 1%. Check it out. The delta is not even 0.01. It's not even 1%. This won't even happen one out of 100 times. This is going to happen, um, looks like 95 times out of 10,000 or something like that, okay? So very, very low chance. If you have more collateral, you can use this. If you don't have more collateral, then you can get closer to the first put option that you sold. So again, the first one you sold is 250. You can sell, for example, at 240, this would just be a put credit spread very close to the money, $1,000 put credit spread. And as you can see here, you're getting about a 10% return. So you wanna use this strategy when you are bullish on a stock or you're bullish on an index fund like QQQ or SPY. So for me, I think you can make a lot of money during times of fear, especially like right now, there's a lot of volatility in the market. So by selling premium, you can actually make a really good amount of money and a really good amount of profit because when fear is higher, applied volatility is higher. When applied volatility is higher, the premiums are actually higher when you sell them. So use this loophole to basically take advantage of, you know, having a smaller account. It's not always that bad to have a smaller account. You can still grow it aggressively. You just have to be smart around it. You have to use different types of strategies. And this is one of the best strategies to growing a small account. If you want to grow a small account aggressively, you should also check out this video right here.